Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hoag, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native father of the effortless English system and club that trains you to speak English fluently, you speak English powerfully, you think in English, you speak English effortlessly, people understand you when you speak English, you feel relaxed and confident when you speak English. Those are the results. You train with my VIP program. You commit and don't quit. How do you do that? It's easy. Go to my website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there today, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit. Don't quit. Commit to my VIP program. Commit. Really commit. And you will get those results just like other great VIP members. Live on Facebook, a little earlier than normal today because I'm watching a baby and my baby is sleeping right now. Um, and let's all just hope she continues to sleep <laughs> or else I might, I might need to end this show very quickly if she starts going crazy. But anyway, we'll try it. We'll try. As always, just want to say hello to everyone who's checking in live. Still live on Facebook, by the way. You know, I don't like Facebook. Facebook's a terrible company. Lots and lots of censorship is happening at Facebook. And uh, so, I mean, to be honest, I don't really like using Facebook. But the problem is that right now for live shows, live streaming shows, this is the best option, the best choice. Um, part of it is that my system, I have a very easy, simple system that's important for me because I'm very busy, especially now with the babies, that I don't have time to uh, deal with. I don't have time to solve a lot of technical problems and other some other streaming software. You know, programs I have used always have technical problems and problems with the stream and problems with the connection. And it's very frustrating. And that means I do fewer shows. So. I need a streaming service that will, a live streaming show that will let me kind of use this very, this great software that I have. I, I'm using Apple computers mostly. And then the second part is that uh, the live chats, that we have a very good community, that we thing on Facebook is only people who follow me, only people who follow Effortless English watch the live shows usually. So we have a very good audience, a very positive audience. It's just Effortless English fans, supporters, or people who are interested in Effortless English. And that's why we have such positive comments and we can have really good discussions and great questions, all of that. So that's the other thing that I need from a streaming service. Many of them, this is the other problem, many of them, they let anybody watch you don't, without following, without subscribing. So you get a lot of trolls, a lot of people just coming. They don't care about effortless English. Many of them are Americans or British or they already speak English. They just want to cause problems and get attention. And I don't, again, I don't like to deal with that. It's just wastes too much time. So for those two reasons, I'm using Facebook still. I don't use Facebook for other social media. I do not use Facebook for my personal life. I do not put personal photos on Facebook anymore. In fact, I de I'm deleting all my past photos from Facebook, especially I've already, already I deleted all photos of children. No, but I had some photos of cousins and uh, not cousins of nephews and nieces. And I deleted all of them from Facebook already. And then slowly I will delete. It's I have so many right now, but I'm gradually deleting all my personal stuff from Facebook. I recommend you do the same. You know, right now we'll just use their video service, but don't put personal information on Facebook. It's not safe. They give this to governments. They give this to companies. They're spying on us. They're censoring people. 
They're a terrible company, so don't support them. Just, uh, I've, I used to advertise on them. I'm not advertising on Facebook anymore because I don't want to give them any money. So, anyway. Hello to everybody from all around the world, as usual. Brazil, Turkey, Egypt. I said a little earlier, so maybe we have some different places. I don't know. Ukraine. Maybe a few new people can join us. Kurdistan, Sri Lanka, Somalia, Vietnam. Your eyes are beautiful. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. Thank you. Oh, we have uh, Mina Sevag. That's good to see you. Uh, Ale um, Alexi. So, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of uh, familiar names here, which is good. I'm doing well today. Okay, let's talk about our topic, and then we'll come back, and I'll do the live questions and comments. By the way, follow me on Gab, speaking of social media and uh, getting away from these uh, terrible Silicon Valley uh, companies. See, the problem with these companies, they're communists. They want to control us. It's all about mind control. It's all about spying. It's all about censorship. All these companies, they're all in the same little area in this in Northern California. Right. And that's why they all think the same. It's a very kind of left wing communist Marxist corporate area of the San Francisco area, it's just south of San Francisco and also including San Francisco. So we want to, uh, as much as we can, we, we've got to get away from these companies. So that's why I'm on Gab now, and we have a good Gab group, Effortless English Gab group. Gab has improved a lot, has improved a lot, which is great. Uh, this time, my first time with Gab was not so good, but this time I'm having a very good experience with Gab. So I am trying to do more and more on Gab. I will be doing less on Twitter and less on Facebook because those are uh, their enemies. They don't like they don't like us. So why should we support them? And the good news, I think more and more uh, companies will start to compete with them, you know, especially companies outside Silicon Valley. And even outside of America, even better. I think you'll start to see um, Asian companies, Japanese, Chinese, Korean competing with them. Uh, and you're going to see your, more and more European companies. It's already happening. Uh, Russian. Um, those are the main areas that I see so far. And then even in the United States, away from California. So Gab is a Texas company. They're located in Texas. They're not a Silicon Valley company, which is good. Very good. There's a, a new one coming called Social Galactic. It's, it's like another kind of social media, Twitter replacement. Um, it's coming, I think, in a couple months. They're based in Italy, Italian. Uh, it also looks promising. Looks like it might be good. So, I, you know, we're going to have some good choices, other choices. Uh, we just, you know, in time, little by little, we'll find other choices and we can leave these terrible companies. But that's not our topic today. <laughs> that's not the topic. Our topic is how to enjoy life. I promised you a happier topic. Right? Um... The last show was kind of heavy, serious. And so I promise you today we will discuss a happy topic. So this is a happy topic and it's how to enjoy life, how to enjoy life. Now, Europeans, not all Europeans, but I'd say I would say generally Europeans have an idea, an ideal, maybe is a better word to use, put an L on the end. Ideal means uh, like it's a high idea. Maybe it's, it's something we, we hope for, we try for, an ideal. And uh, I'd say overall in Europe, especially in the southern uh, Mediterranean European countries, there is an ideal of an idea of the good life, living the good life. Not a good life, but the, with a with T-H, the good life. And... Um, what does this mean, this kind of European? I, it's not only European, but certainly I see it in Europe, especially uh, Southern Europe quite a lot, Mediterranean Europe. And it's the idea of, of enjoying life is really what it is. It's about having balance in life, enjoying life. And much of it means, especially 
balancing work and money against everything else. And so many Europeans in these countries, they, for example, they look at America and they think, oh, Americans work too much. Americans just work, 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 work. American life is unbalanced. It's not balanced. Americans don't enjoy life enough because they're working, 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 working all the time. And they look at ja Japan and Japanese and this kind of even worse than America, right? Work, 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 work. It's not that work is bad. Work is fine, but it, that it's unbalanced. And the Europeans, the Southern Europeans, have more of this idea that, uh, oh, well, you know, work is only one little part of life, but we have to balance it with these other parts to fully enjoy our life, that we need enough leisure time. And I'll give you an example that I saw in Spain, okay? Spain, I think you'll probably see this in Italy. You'll probably see this in Greece and uh, maybe some of the more northern European countries too, but, uh, but certainly in Spain. So when I, when I visited Spain and when I traveled around Spain, I saw this very much. The Spanish have um, a different view of work. Some might say lazy. <laughs> Some Americans might say lazy. But, uh, you know, fair enough. But I think there's some very positive things about it. And, uh, for example, you know, the Spanish very famously have a siesta, traditionally. Some of their international companies, maybe not. But still, there is an idea of siesta. Siesta. What is a siesta? Siesta is a break in the middle of the day. There's not an exact time, but let's say from, uh, I don't know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 5. 2 to 5, 1 to 4. You know, it's 2 or 3 hours long, something like that. It might be a little later. Maybe it's 3 to 6. Um maybe varies different parts of Spain the exact times might be a little different but basically it's the middle of the day and siesta and the idea is during the siesta what do you do you take a break right they don't this idea of working eight or nine hours without a long break just work 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 work, work all day they don't like that so what they do is they work in the morning and then they, maybe they have their lunch, but then they take this long siesta. What do they do in this siesta? Well, really anything. They might go home and take a nap or take a nap in their, at the office. Uh, I think mostly what they do is they'll go out and uh, maybe they'll have a very long lunch or go to a little cafe and just sit and relax and chat with coworkers or friends. Maybe they'll read a book, whatever. Every, most of the business is closed during this time, but you usually can find uh, like a couple little cafes, what the Spanish often call bars, but really uh, in English what we call cafes will be open. But it's basically this is relaxing, quiet time in the, in the afternoon. And this is, again, the, you know, the idea of uh, it's a balance, okay? You work, work, work in the morning, but then take a break. Don't just work, 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 work without a break all day like Americans do, like Japanese do, like many others do. Now, of course, you know, the, the history of this, it, it involves the weather, right? The, especially the summers in Spain and Italy, too, uh, can be really hot, especially middle of the day. And so, especially before air conditioning, it was crazy to work, work, work in the hottest part of the day. So they would go and uh, take a break, right? But, um, but it's also connected to this idea of, of the good life, of balancing work and other parts of life. And then what the Spanish will do, they'll go back and they'll work more. And then the second thing that connected to this, this good life is that the Spanish stay out late. They go out late. Um, eight, nine, ten, eleven at night. They go out and they typically will go, uh, they'll get you know, tapas, you know, there's, there's those little um, small we might, snacks or little small meals. But they go out. The idea is you go out with friends or family or at home, home also. But the idea is that you spend time, social time. You have this social time at night with friends and with family, friends and family, friends or family. And they'll stay up late, you know, till midnight or one or later. And it's not... 
of course, especially young people, yeah, maybe they go out drinking and they get drunk. But it's, it's different than America. When people in America stay out late, usually they're getting drunk and it's younger people. Uh, but that's not really the common thing I saw in Spain. Uh, it's more of just uh, it's more about, again, appreciating and enjoying social time with the people that you care about your friends and your family. If you have family, then you maybe you go do things with family or you ha they come over to your house. Another part of this idea of the good life, especially the European idea, is that you appreciate and enjoy the good things in life. Right? So what does that mean? Good people. Social life. Good people people you care about most good food they definitely like to appreciate and enjoy good food but again it's an there's an idea in all of this of balance and moderation that to enjoy means to slow down a little bit take time and appreciate not just food uh, eat a huge amount of food and become uh, until you're you know you're you're completely full uh, and then you get really fat that's not the idea. Again, that's more of an American idea and British idea and maybe other places too. But this is not the idea that, for example, in Spain, Italy, Greece, it's uh, enjoy good food, yes, but by good they mean quality, right? Not junk, but higher quality food. And they mean enjoy it in moderation, I mean, slow down, appreciate the taste, not just ah, eat it really fast for the calories or for some quick good feeling, but to slow down and appreciate it. Now, the Japanese also have this idea. Japan, this is the same idea Japanese have about food. Um, Japanese value what we would say subtlety in, J in food, right? Not just super strong tastes. Now, I love Indian food. I love Thai food. But those, uh, those are strong tastes. But Japanese food, they have, it's fantastic taste. But in, Jap in Japan, it's about the quality that you're, you have to notice it. You have to slow down a little bit and appreciate the, they're not quite as strong, but they're really good. The, the tastes of the food, the quality of the food. And I think that the Europeans have this idea, too. I mean, the French are famous for this, the Italians and the Spanish. They're all famous for this kind of thing. So um, even alcohol, alcohol, again. So, you know, I don't drink, but, but in Europe you'll find, again, the ideal of enjoying alcohol, but in moderation, that it's something that, like, you, you drink a nice wine that tastes good, you, you drink it, not ooh, fast, but slowly appreciating the taste and quality of it. Not the uh, American college student idea of drink just to get drunk and lose control. Different than that. And you'll see this also with whiskey. Now, you will see this, for example, up in Scotland, too, and, and other parts of Europe, all around Europe. Same idea. You're not just drinking whiskey fast. Whoo, 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 whoo. Drink it fast and get drunk and lose control. No, 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 no. That the idea is that it, this is uh, something that there's all these little, s very small, little, complicated flavors in the whiskey, and you, you smell it, you drink it very slowly, you notice it, you appreciate it like an art. Speaking of art, same idea along this, the idea of good life, that part of the good life is enjoying and appreciating art, good art. Good music, quality music, sports, all of these things, not just work, 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 right? So here's the, I, and I think this is a wonderful idea, and you can really, you can see this when you travel around Europe, especially if you go to get out of the fast big cities, and you get to smaller towns, and you take your time, and you talk to people, and there is this slower more enjoyable speed of life maybe i like it i'm from the south in the united states and traditionally in the south of the U the usa southeast we have the same idea 
Slow down. Don't go so fast. We look at people in New York City and we think uh, they're crazy. Uh, they're just running around, working, 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 busy, busy, busy. Every, you know, go, 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 go all the time. And we have a different idea in the South. And uh, again, especially in Mediterranean Europe, probably, I don't know, I haven't been there, but I imagine probably similar to um, also in um, Turkey and Syria and Lebanon. And I, I imagine it goes down into um, what we call the Middle East, but into Mediterranean uh, areas there too. I've just, I've been to Turkey and I, you probably actually, I don't know, I've only been to Istanbul, so I'm not sure, but I imagine that it's, it's a, it's an overall Mediterranean thing, even not, not just Southern Europe. So anyway, I think this is a wonderful idea, but how does this connect with our, um, our idea of simplicity? See, sometimes when I talk about simplicity, right? Voluntary simplicity, live simply, cut your expenses super low. People think it's the opposite of what I'm talking about. People think I'm talking about the opposite of the good life. Don't enjoy life, right? Live, eliminate everything. We have a word in English, austere. There's a, this is a good vocabulary word for you, austere. Austere is this idea of not just simple, but, but strict, strict, tough. Like you eliminate everything. No pleasure. Right? People, you know, people imagine like a, a monk in a cave meditating. No enjoyment. That's what people, some people, not everybody, but some people imagine when I say simplicity, when I say cut your expenses, when I say live, live, live cheaply. They, some people think I'm talking about that. They think it sounds boring. There's no enjoyment. How can you can't you're not enjoying life you're 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 living in you know in an ugly place and you never enjoy anything and so that's why they think oh that sucks why because we've been trained right again advertising 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 we're trained we think to live a good life equals spend money right we think that live a good life means consume consume buy consume spend we think that's what it means but it doesn't so the truth is exactly the opposite when you when i when you look at the for example my example of spain what gives the spanish that balance what gives the spanish that enjoyment it's time it's the time it's not money it's the time. It's the time. They take the time. They take a break from work. They have that time in the middle of the day to slow down, to relax, take a break. They take the time in the evening to see their friends, to enjoy with their family, to enjoy good food and appreciate it. They slow down and appreciate whether it's drinking or eating. They slow down to appreciate art, to appreciate music. They take the time to do all of this. They're not working, working, working 60 hours a week, 50 hours a week, exhausted from work like a lot of Americans. A lot of Americans, they have no time for this stuff. They'll say, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to take a nap during the day. I don't have time to spend four hours a night with friends and family. I don't have time. You know, this is what Americans complain about a lot and Japanese and others too. It's the time that gives that balance, that moderation, that enjoyment of life. Work is great. I I like my work, but we need the we need the time for it's the it's only part of life, not shouldn't be the biggest thing. The Europeans are correct about this. So it's not money, it's time. You don't need a lot of money to have a good life, to enjoy the good life, to enjoy life. You need time. You also need a mindset, an attitude of appreciation and mindfulness. Mindfulness means awareness. This is what import is important, not a lot of money. You know, for example... 
You can go sit in a park. You can take two hours in the afternoon, like a siesta. You don't have to spend money. You can just sit in a nice park, read a book. You can make a coffee at home and, you know, bring it in a bottle like a that keeps it warm if you like warm. Take it to the park with a little sandwich or a snack and a book. Sit in the park a couple hours, watch the birds, watch the people, look at the sky, look at the flowers, read your book, drink a little coffee or tea or water. That's great. And that's almost no money. Super, super, super cheap. Spending money is not necessary. Just the time is necessary. And the attitude. Um, it's the same thing. You can go walking. This is why I encourage you when you listen to Effortless English Lessons or my podcast, go for a walk. Walk around. Maybe you have a nice city. Go look at the buildings. Look at the architecture. Look at the people. Look at the sky. Look at the trees. Appreciate. Appreciate it all each day. What about, uh, you know, some people say like with the Spanish, well, it costs money to go out to eat, to go to restaurants. And Spanish do like restaurants. They do go out a lot. But uh, you don't have to do that. You can do the same thing at home. Cook at home. Have dinner parties at home. Invite your friends and their family. Come to your house and you make dinner. Or maybe everybody brings something, right? We call this, um, well, there's different names for it in English. But, uh, you know, basically... You know, everybody brings one dish and then you just enjoy several hours in your home with friends or with family, other family, and just talk and relax. A dinner party, so no, no money for restaurants. You don't have to go out. You can do it in your home and maybe then the next week you go to someone else's home, right? It kind of goes around to different people's houses. I used to do this when I was in uh, uh, grad school. When I was in grad school, I didn't have a lot of money. But uh, my friends in grad school, we did this. We had a weekly dinner party. And each week, someone new would host it. So we would go to different people's houses. We'd each bring, each of us would bring something, some dish or some snack. And we just, it was very nice. It was fun. It was very cheap, but very social. It was fantastic, really fun. Really enjoyable. I miss it, actually. Um, so dinner parties, again, very cheap. Um, what else? An th another thing you can do to enjoy the good life, this really enjoying life without spending money, is a basic idea. Do, D-O, do instead of consuming. Instead of being a consumer, right, we get the messages, TV, movies, especially advertising, consume, buy, consume, buy, watch. All of that is passive. But instead, do, create, make. For example, art. Appreciating art is wonderful, but even better, do art. Okay, maybe you don't have money. You don't have money. You can't pay to go to a museum well learn to draw learn to draw just sketch and draw you don't need to become a great artist that's not necessary but just start to learn the skills and each day go to a park go outside draw any you can draw anything you can draw a cup you can draw things in your home you can draw fruit you can draw trees you can draw plants you can try to draw people become an artist do art make art Instead of just looking at it. Again, what do you need to draw? A pencil and paper. Cheap. Super cheap. A pencil, paper, maybe an eraser. I mean, that's super, super, super cheap. You can learn to sketch and draw. And the other cool thing about this, doing art, instead of just looking at it, you will also appreciate it more. You know, I, I learned to sketch and draw a little bit. I'm not very good. It was a long time ago I did this. I might try to do it again. I actually miss it a little bit. But, um, but after I did that, I, when I looked at famous paintings and famous drawings like masters, I saw, I looked at them differently. 
I could see, I realized the skill. I realized, wow, now I understand why this is amazing. You know, when I visited Sistine Chapel and I saw Michelangelo's work and I, I realized, ah, okay. You know, of course it's beautiful, but if you learn even just a little bit, you try to draw. You'll appreciate those masters much more. The same is true for music. You know, again, instead of just listening to music, right? We listen to music as a product. It's kind of brainwashing, especially popular music. Popular music is garbage, mostly garbage. There is good music now, but it's, I think it's smaller, it's independent, it's more local. Again, that's a cheaper way to enjoy music. If you go to see Paul McCartney, you know, from the Beatles, or U2, or uh, Ariana Grande, or whatever, Lady Gaga, you will pay a lot of money for those tickets. Expensive. But probably in your little town or city, there are many fantastic, just amazing musicians, just little, you know, local. They're not famous. You can go to a small club and see them or a cafe for very, very cheaply, very, very cheap. And the other thing, the cool thing, when you see these local musicians, you're, it's like front row seats. You're paying little money. The music is great. And you're right in front of them, front, like front row, better than any expensive concert. You can go to see classical music so often. It's not, it's not expensive many times. Sometimes it is, but often you can find it where it's not. And also with music, instead of just listening to it, become a musician. Now, again, you do not, you do not have to become a good musician. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I tried to learn the bass. I practiced bass guitar a little bit. Uh, and eventually I stopped. But um, just a little bit doing it, again, I now appreciate music more. First of all, now when I listen to music, I hear the bass. In the past, I, I, I really did not notice the bass at all. I didn't notice the drums very much in the past. But after learning bass a little bit, it now I appreciate. I can listen. I can hear the bass. I hear the drums. And I like, wow, I appreciate just the overall rhythm, the overall music much more now just by trying a little bit. It's the same with singing. I, I did singing lessons for a while and I'm not a very good singer, but I can sing a little bit now. I'm less shy about it now and I enjoy it now. And at home, I'll sing a little bit sometimes. It's great. And again, I appreciate good singers now more. So again, you can learn to play guitar, just basic guitar. You can buy a cheap, very cheap acoustic guitar or electric. You can buy a cheap one. You can get on YouTube and learn chords. You can learn to play songs, very cheap. You can learn to draw pencil and paper only, very cheap. And this is true, again, for any kind of art you want to do. So again, you're, you're appreciating and enjoying the good life and enjoying these good things about civilization does not require money. Even something like wine. Some people are, they love to enjoy wines. There's so much good wine. I can't tell you from experience, but just from reading, watching videos, from what I see, that there are some very, 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 very good wines, quality wines that are not expensive now because, you know, you've got European wines, you've got Australian wines, they grow in Chile, they in California. Uh, so you've got all these places around the world now and there's so many people and there's little small growers that you can find some excellent wines quite, that are quite cheap. Uh, and this is just true in so many areas. Like I said, with music, you can find local musicians. Cheap, great. You can see them face to face. Often you can talk to them after the show and have a conversation with them, tell them you like them. I mean, it's amazing. It's great. So we can live this good life without a lot of money. 
And the reason simplicity is important, voluntary simplicity, cutting your expenses, it gives you the time. You, you don't need to work so much. So then you have time to do all of these other things in life. You know, for example, a lot of women, they, they, they complain that they have children. I don't have time to stay home. I have to go to work. They want to raise their children, be at home with their children all the time. Well, cut your expenses and do it. Your children are more important than extra money. You know, cut your expenses. Enjoy cheap things. Enjoy free things. Appreciate life. Slow down. The time with your children is magic. No job can replace that. Never. Never. And dads, too. You know, I'm a new dad. Same thing. I work some. You know, my wife uh, d doesn't work. She's full-time mom. But, uh, you know, I'm mostly a full-time dad now, too. I, I have simplified my business and my work, so I have lots and lots and lots of time for my children, too. So they get to enjoy their mom and their dad all the time. And again, it's more important than money. We need some money to live, but we can, we can live more simply than we imagine. And when we do, when we change our attitude, change our mindset, we appreciate the free things, the cheap things, the simple things in life. When we become creative, this gives you that good life the Europeans talk about. Because the most precious thing is the time and the appreciation, not the money. All right, so there you go. I hope that's a, you know, it's a positive thing. The great thing is students can enjoy this. Poor people can enjoy this. Rich people can enjoy this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you're making. You can simplify your life to give yourself more time. You can change your mindset, your attitude to appreciate, to slow down, to enjoy all of these parts of life, these wonderful gifts we have. All of these things are better than an expensive car. All of these things are better than an expensive house. All of these things are better than expensive clothes. All of these things are better than expensive electronics, computers, phones. All of these things are much better. So enjoy life. Yes, enjoy it. Yes, there's evil like we talked about yesterday. And it's all this programming to make us choose to spend money and buy and be slaves and follow them. But the good news, you have this other choice. And this other choice is not expensive. This other choice is simple. This other choice is wonderful. And it's happy. And it's enjoyable. It's not boring. It's the opposite of boring. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. So choose that. All right, let's go to the questions and comments. Live questions and comments on Facebook. I'll give you a minute. Now, see, Louisa, this is bullshit. I'm going to call you out on this. This is absolutely bullshit. Starving one kids for free time. Who said starving? That's a negative... Um, victim mindset you're saying you can't reduce your expenses you're saying you have to buy uh phones and expensive cars and expensive houses and lots of bullshit consumer stuff now you're it's an excuse you know how cheaply you can feed your children in fact do you, do you have to take your children to expensive restaurants do you know how cheap good food is quality food a huge bag of rice, for example, organic rice, huge, or beans, cheap, or just regular quality meats to go to your local butcher, fresh vegetables, even better, grow your own, you can't, have a garden, make your own garden, that is the highest quality food you can feed your children, the best nutrition. And it's also cheaper than going to the grocery store. 
So that's bu that's a bullshit attitude. I think your children would rather have your time. What they want is your love and your time. Not new clothes. Not an iPhone. Not expensive plastic toys. You know? Like Vatroslav here says, spend more time with kids without spending your money. Exactly. How expensive is a ball? <laughs> a soccer ball. Well, it's cheap. You buy it one time. And you can play with your children for years and years with that soccer ball. Take them to the park. Run around. You can play soccer. You can play dodgeball. You can chase them. You can climb. Oh, there's so much you can do. It costs nothing. Almost nothing. Or it costs nothing. My, my little nephew who lives near me, I, I play with him all the time. We play with a ball. <laughs> We climb trees and we look we look around for bugs. We catch bugs. And we look at plants and we collect plants. I mean, all that is free. And we have a great time. And because of that, because I spend that time with him, I'm very, very close to him. We are very, very, very close, my nephew and I, because of the time. And it costs no money. We, I don't, we never spend money. Now, what if I was working, working, working all the time, and I, I didn't see him much, and I just bought him stuff? Would I have a good relation? No. He'd say, thanks, and then uh, throw it, you know, and that's it. And he'd forget about it. You know, those plastic toys they get, they are excited before they get the toy because of marketing and maybe social pressure from other kids. They're excited about this plastic toy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When they get it, they're excited for maybe, what, one week, usually? And then what happens? They throw it in the closet and they just usually forget about that toy. It's gone and then they want the next one and the next one and the next one. That's bad training. They don't need that crap. It's garbage, man. It's garbage. Reba says, nice glasses, but your eyes look nicer without it. Yeah, the glasses are for reading. That's why I'm taking them on and off. <laughs> and see, Shuggles says, exactly. It takes zero dollars, zero, to be a friend with your children and to create a healthy member for society. That's right. Zero dollars. None. Even feeding yourself. And this is also not just children, yourself. Look, you will eat healthier and more cheaply if you eat at home quality, fresh, real food. It's cheaper and it's healthier. So, I don't know. I just don't, I just don't understand this, that mentality because, you know, I've done it. I've done it. I, 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 I'm still doing it. So, this, this idea you have to spend lots and lots of money um, for your kids to be happy is absolutely wrong the idea you have to spend a lots and lots of money for you to be happy is totally wrong and in fact it's really the opposite if you focus on spending money and all your time working 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 you will be less happy um ah here's a book recommendation from chris yan uh how to enjoy living life um, by uh, there's a book called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. I haven't I haven't read that. I've seen it, but I haven't read it. And Lieber, uh, let's see, Leo Bomer. Leo Bomer says, "You're definitely right. I spend too much time a day for my job." I see as my children suffer from lack of time I set aside for them. I hope I'll be able to change my job in the future. Good, good, good. I'm not attacking you, by the way. I'm not criticizing people. You know, I I'm not criticizing you like you're a bad person. I'm saying you will be happier 
if you do this. I'm trying to help you. Okay? I'm trying to help. And it's a choice. I'm not, I can't force you to do anything. I'm just giving you my opinion and my advice and my experience. So you do what you want. Of course you do. Does it mean you're evil and a bad mom if you're working right now? No, but I'm just saying think about it and if and think about reducing your work time. Not just women, men too. Men too. You know, in Japan they have this problem where the the women will stay home with the children, which is fantastic, but then the men will work crazy hours. Not all, but many of them. They work 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week. They're working until 10 o'clock at night. So they do not have that close connection to their children. It's, it's stupid. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> it's, they're, they're, they're crazy and they're, it, it's not human. So men too, by the way. You know, not just women. My dad, you know, I can t say this from my own. My dad did this. Not 60 hours a week, but, you know, I didn't see my dad enough. My dad was not enough of a leader, not enough of uh, influence in my life as a child because he was working too much. And I know, you know, I'm not blaming him, not attacking him. He thought he was doing the right thing. He, you know, he was programmed like all of us, like you and I. He was programmed, you know, that, that more money, more money, bigger house. That was the key to happiness and a good life. But he was wrong. He was wrong. This, was he a bad person? No, but it was a mistake. It was a mistake. And the reason I'm teaching you this and telling you this is because we're all getting this programming, all of this programming, and it's a lie. It's a lie. Okay, the other thing is, another thing to think about is you can make small improvements okay you don't need to quit your job right now 100 percent and completely change your life suddenly you can do that i have done that in the past but you don't have to you can make little improvements you know reduce your work time a little bit reduce your spending a little bit increase your savings a little bit Take a little extra time with your family, with your children. Get a little more balance in your life. Slow down a little bit. And then later, a little more. And then later, a little more. You can make a very slow, gradual change in one year, two years, five years. Yeah. You know, it depends on your personality. It depends on your situation. Some people like big sudden changes and uh, they'll just jump in and do something big. And some people will do, they prefer small and little by little. Even for me, actually, it depends on the situation. Some parts of life, I like to jump in and make a big change suddenly. Other parts of life, I prefer very slow and gradual. So it's okay, right? That's okay. I'm just saying we can enjoy this good life. We do not need to be slaves to money. More money is not going to, you know, spending lots of money does not make you happy. And this is the key. I think Marianne has got an, is 100% is right about this. People can't live simply because they are afraid of being different or unusual from others. And it's, again, it's this social programming, schools, media, and others. They're afraid of being different or unusual from others. That is, I agree, I, I think she's 100% right about this. I think this is exactly what it is. I think that's the biggest factor. They measure success by what they have compared to what other people have done or have. We must remember to live happily and have peace of mind. Success measured by what you should and could have happened and done. Yes, that's right. Here's an idea. Measure your success by your happiness. There's a good definition of success. How happy are you? If you have a billion dollars and you are super unhappy, are you successful? You are successful financially, yes, but are you 
generally successful in life? I say no. If you live very, very simply and you are very, very happy in general, yeah, we all have problems, but overall, you're appreciating your life, you have gratitude, you have love, you have happiness. You're successful. That's success. Not, you know, what, what, what is money? It's just numbers. It's paper or numbers on a screen. It's useful. Yes, of course, we need it. Uh, in our modern world, we need it, but don't worship it. Um, yeah, Liza is it with a good point. And I see, I see in my environment, many parents buy horrible video games for their kids. They don't deal with them, talk to them. They just let them immerse themselves in this fa false, false world. Terrible, awful. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's what the problem is. A lot of parents, um, a few problems. <laughs> a lot of parents are tired all the time. Why? They're working too much. <laughs> okay. They're tired. They're trying to do too much. Their life is too busy. So because of that, they're, they're tired all the time. I understand. They are tired. Because they are tired when their children are being energetic, when their children are being naughty. They, uh, they, can't, they don't want to deal with it. They don't have the energy. Children require a huge amount of energy. I understand that. And so what do they do? Well, what's the easy solution? Oh, give the child a video. Because when you give a video to a child, they just become quiet. and uh... Yeah, but it's programming, okay? They're learning a lot of evil, terrible programming. Video games, same thing. Not all video games are terrible and evil, but a lot of them are very violent. And again, too much is bad for their brain, bad for their happiness, but they're babysitters. This is also, by the way, why a lot of chill, uh, parents, I think most parents like school, public schools. Babysitting, it's free babysitting. Again, they get a break because they're tired. They don't really believe the schools are good at education. What they, but what they do like is the schools take their children for many hours a day. So that's problem number one. They're tired. The other reason they're tired, they're tired because they're working or too busy, too many distractions, too many things. The second reason um, they're tired is because they don't understand how to do discipline and leadership. This is a problem. Uh, my parents' generation, I'm talking about American culture. I don't know other countries, but American culture. My parents' generation, the baby boomers, um, they were the first... TV generation. They were programmed. And because of that, many of them did a bad job as parents. Bad job meaning they did not discipline. They did not have enough discipline. They did not have enough leadership. They were afraid to be leaders for their children. They were afraid to teach their children, to guide. They were afraid to give rules. They gave their kids too much freedom at a young age. Well, when you do that, is not good for your children. It does not make them happier. It makes them little monsters. And when the children become monsters, when they have no self-control, no discipline, no rules, no respect, well, then what happens? Then it's very difficult to be around them. You don't enjoy them. You become very tired. You become even more tired. Why? Because the children are bad all the time. They're disrespectful, not respectful. They're, they don't follow rules. They have no self-control. No one likes this. No adult wants to be around children who are rude and uncontrolled and spoiled. And the parents also don't like it. And it makes the parents very, very tired. And so again, what do they do? Instead of learning leadership, instead of learning discipline, what do they do? Here's a video. And it's fast, but it's terrible. 
you've got to learn. And I understand, like, if your parents did not do this, if you didn't learn from your parents how to do this, then you have to figure it out. Read books. <laughs> you know, books are good. Watch videos. Figure out how to do discipline. You, okay, you can do it in a kind way, you know. Discipline is love. You're, discipline means you're training and teaching your children and preparing them to be great adults. You're teaching them self-control. You're teaching them how to be good socially with adults and other children. Okay, this is love. It's not control, it's love. And when your children are generally, you know, polite, generally have good self-discipline for their age, then everybody loves to be around them, including you, including the parents. Then you don't want to give them a video. You want to talk to them. You want to play with them. You want to be with them more. They're wonderful to be with. Right, so and this is good for them. Then they're around more adults. They get good all these good influences. They have this great social life. So disciplining your children and having rules and guidelines and teaching them good social politeness is love. And you will love and appreciate and enjoy your children much, much more when you do this. But if you let them go wild and crazy and be rude, you're not going to enjoy them. So this is why, also with homeschooling, people think, people think, oh, I, I could never homeschool. Oh, my God, it's so difficult. Well, they think this because they think it would be terrible. They think their children at home all day, acting naughty and uncontrolled would be a disaster. It would. It would. It would be terrible. But if, when you have discipline, loving discipline, when your children learn good social skills, then it's easy. You will love it. You'll enjoy teaching them. I mean, teachers do this. I, when I taught children long, long ago, that's the first thing I had to learn. The first skill I had to learn was these children must be disciplined. This is a good thing about being a t teaching children because you have, a, a, you have many children in a class, 5, 8, 10, 20, 30, if, if they go wild, if they go crazy, you it will be hell, all right? So teachers know this, and they learn how to make rules and how to make, you know, good behavior. And they do it with 20 kids. You can do it with two. You can do it with three or five how, or one. It, you just have to learn the skills. That's all. Learn the skills. You'll learn it. You'll be good. All right, sorry, I'm talking long about that. Rava says, just stop the digital addiction. Stop sleeping with it. By doing so, you can start to think more clearly about how you are choosing to spend your time enjoyably. 100% agree. These are dangerous things. These, where's my old dead phone? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, we say in English a nice idiom, double-edged sword, double-edged sword, right? A sword has two sharp sides. So the internet is, has a good side, which is what we're doing now. Uh, you can get good books. You can find wonderful things on the internet, but it has a, a bad side. You can also find a lot of garbage, a lot of programming, a lot of lies. TV is TV is mostly negative. Movies and TV are almost all negative. Internet is mixed, but the good thing about the internet is you can choose. TV, there's not much choice because the big companies control it completely. Um, Abra, hey Abra, um, what book helped you the most to take care of your own business? Now, I'm not sure if you're talking about my financial, like in a general way, like my, my financial life, 
or if you mean specifically my, my actual business. But in general, I recommend Your Money or Your Life, Your Money or Your Life by Joe Dominguez is really good about how to live a simple life and also enjoy life a lot. Your Money or Your Life, Live a Simple Life and Enjoy It. Your Money or Your Life by Joe Dominguez and Vicky Robin. Uh, for business books, uh, I'll think about that. Sorry, I'll do another. T I'll do another show about business sometime. We'll talk more. All right. Continuing to read comments. One second. Okay, here's, um, let's see. Hugh Lay. I'm sorry about pronunciation. Nowadays, there's so many people getting stressed for their work pressure. Yeah. So sports, workout, hobby, spending time with your friends and family are all good ways to reduce stress. You can practice yoga to reduce stress. All good suggestions. See, this is, again, this Europe. I say European. Of course, it's not only European, but... I always think of Europe about this because they, many Europeans do a good job with this, um, at least traditionally. And so there is, you're right, there's, that there's all these wonderful parts of life and uh, we can enjoy all of them. If we do too much of one, it's unbalanced and it actually be, creates unhappiness. Maybe this, you know, I say Europe, maybe this goes back to Aristotle. You know, Aristotle very famously um, talked about moderation, the value of moderation, meaning this idea of not too much, not too little. Not too much, not too little. I mean, you know, Buddhists and Buddha taught exactly the same thing, the middle way. So it isn't just a European idea, but maybe in Europe that's where it goes back to. Um so, right, sports are fun, exercise. You need to take care of your body, not just for exercise, but enjoyably. I enjoy walking. I enjoy doing exercise. You can play sports, whatever. Do it enjoyably, and it can be free. You can join a gym, but I don't. I pay no money for exercise. Um, hobbies. You could be drawing. It could be painting. It could be, I don't know, anything, building furniture, anything you want that you enjoy. And then, of course, um, of course, your family and your children. And then also your friends. We all need friends. Also that. And meditation and God and all of it. Yoga. I mean, all of these things give you a, this complete life. And yes, work is part of this. Of course, work is one part of it. But it should not be the main part, the only part. The work should not take over everything else. Money should not take over everything else. Money is one part. Yeah, no, this is good. Some Yacht Kind says, just supporting money to your kids is not enough. I don't think it's enough. Right, it's not. Help them have goals. In fact, that's probably the smallest thing. Help them have goals. Yes. Help them know what they're good at, what they really want to be in life. Yes. Give them some guidance, some coaching as they get older, especially, right? Most young kids don't know what they want to be, where to put their time, energy and focus. Yes. Another topic, dating and women and men, marriage. Parents don't talk about this anymore. You know, so, so many, I mean, on... I'm, a, you know, I talk, I talk about different topics, mostly education and philosophy, but so many, especially young men, but sometimes young women ask me questions about dating and marriage. I'm not an expert about that at all, but, but then I realize, yeah, you know, parents don't teach this anymore. This is one of your big jobs as a parent, not just quickly say something to them, but I mean, tell them. How do you have a good relationship with a man or a woman? How do you date? If you're a young man, how do you 
attract a girl? What should you do and not do? What works? What doesn't work? What, do you, what should you be careful of? What kind of girls are bad and you should avoid them? What should you look for in a girl that's good? It's not just a good body or a nice face, right? We all know this. And of course, moms and, and parents need to do this with their girls too. But they don't. I mean, mine didn't. I think they're embarrassed by it. I think modern parents, not all, but many modern parents are embarrassed about this topic. So they avoid it. So where do the kids get information? Where do they get information about dating, love, sex, marriage? The media, movies, TV, and their stupid friends. And the stupid friends get the same ideas from movie, TV, or worse, the worst one is pornography. Porn which is everywhere online now. And this is why young men have no idea how to attract a girl, how to date, how to get married. And this is why the girls, the same thing. It's why they're all just trying. They think just having lots of sex is the answer. They're confused. They're upset. They're lost. Parents, it's your job to help them with this. I wish my parents had helped me. It took me 18, uh, probably a full 20 years. It took me 20 years to learn this. And thank God for the internet because finally I started to figure it out. What do women, what are women really attracted to? How do I really attract? Girls, how do I really have a relationship with them that will work? What should I really look for for a girl or a woman for marriage? And how can that be good? And how can I keep a marriage strong? It took me 20 years to figure that out. And like young men now, I was lost completely. In my 20s, I was clueless and lost and upset and unhappy in, about this topic in this area of my life because my parents gave me zero information none so I just completely lost and I got all my information from media and it's the and I got the exact opposite I, it was lies 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 I tried what the movies say tell you to do as a young man and the TV shows and it didn't work in fact it, it made me super unhappy And young, it, they do the same thing to young women. They tell you, oh, yeah, just have fun, party, sex in the city. And uh, that's fun for a short time. And guess what? Then you get older. And then you're not so pretty. And then you don't have a family. And then, oh, the men are not so interested in you anymore. And you wasted your youth on this bullshit. So I understand from both sides. So parents, this is one of the big ones. Miat is is right about this. And it's it's money is another one. So sex, dating, relationships, marriage. And number 2, money. My parents never taught me anything. Nothing zero about money. They except go to college, get a job. That was their that little sentence, go to college, get a job, go to college, get a job. Nothing else. They didn't teach me about debt and usury and how dangerous it was. They didn't teach me about financial independence, probably because they didn't understand it themselves. They didn't know. So I don't blame them again. I'm not attacking my parents. I love them very much and I appreciate them. I'm grateful for them. They cared about me. They love me. I have a good relationship with my parents. Um, they were programmed. Okay, but we are not. We are waking up. And so we must teach our children about money too. Financial independence. The truth about money. Rich dad, poor dad. You can read rich dad, poor dad together. That's an easy way to do it. You don't need to be rich. You don't need, you, but just help them understand these ideas. So as they grow up, they have an idea. They don't become slaves to money. You know, read your money or your life with your children, teach it to them. Read Rich Dad, Poor Dad with your children, teach it to them. Maybe they'll do better than you did. I hope, I hope my children are more free than I am. I hope they're more f happy. 
I hope they know this before they're 38. Because <laughs> I was 38 when I finally figured out a lot of this stuff, my late 30s. Well, I hope they know when they're 18 or they're 16. Right? So we can, you know, we must do this. Don't, don't, don't think the schools will teach this stuff. They won't, or they'll teach lies. Don't think the media will teach this stuff. It's, it will be completely lies. It's our job to be leaders. And not just, you know, coaches, leaders, all of this. Okay, I'm passionate about this topic. Can you see? <laughs> okay, um, oh man, this is, um, I'm not sure if it's Georgian letters or... Any Russian? Uh, hmm. Anyway, I can't read your name. I'm sorry. Ebrenner. Yes, but first someone has to teach me about money. You got to teach yourself. Now, I understand this because, again, my generation in America, uh, maybe your genera younger generations, maybe some older generations, maybe you did not learn this, right? Maybe your parents never taught you any of this stuff. Don't blame them. Don't be angry at your parents because of this, because they didn't know. They also were programmed by TV. And remember, for your parents, they did not have the Internet. They only had TV. They, 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 they couldn't learn this red pill stuff so easily. We, this is a good thing for us. So don't blame them. Um, but you must teach yourself, right? I did not learn a lot of this stuff my, from my parents. I didn't learn it from school. So where did I learn it? Why did it take so long? Because I had to teach myself. I did it with books and life experience. How do you learn financial independence and money? I just told you two great books. Read those books and then try to do what the books tell you. Um, how do you do leadership and discipline with your children? There are many good books about this. There's one called Tools for Teaching. It's for, it's for teachers, but it's great for parents. The same techniques work for parents. I'm going to type it now. Tools for Teaching. Is it teaching or teachers? I always forget. Anyway, it's by Fred Jones. Now, this is a great book. about. It's about discipline. It's, it's for teachers who teach children. How to have discipline, kind discipline, okay, kind. Not me, not hitting and all that, not yelling. At the, in fact, the exact opposite. No yelling in this system, this, this technique. No yelling at all. Yelling is a sign of weakness. If you yell at your children, it means you're angry, you have no control. It shows weakness to them. So it's the exact opposite. Tools for Teaching by Fred Z Jones. You can use his methods for your own children when they're, when they're being naughty, when they're doing something you don't want them to do, or when you want to teach them good things. It's a, it's, it works so well. It's very peaceful. It's very loving and kind, but it is also strong. And it works. I promise you, it works, it works, it works. Um... So again, you have to find out yourself. Maybe your parents didn't know this. They didn't teach it to you. You've got to learn it. What about relationships? Like dating. Like, like maybe you're a father. And uh, maybe you're like, well, you know, I'm lucky I'm married. But, you know, really, I'm not confident about dating. I mean, really, I, I don't really know. How, 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 how do they date? How do they attract a girl? And how do they, you know then, you know, have a relationship and get married. So you have to learn it. If not for, if you don't learn it for yourself, learn it so you can help your children. So you can learn, like, the Rational Male books for men. The Rational Male by Rolo Tomasi. Three books, I think. And others. But anyway, you got to research. Maybe you find other books that work. For girls, I'm not sure because I'm, I'm a man. So <laughs> I'm not really sure for, you know, moms you know, teaching girls uh, about these topics. But I have, uh, my wife will have to learn this and teach this to our daughter. So you got to teach yourself independent learning. That's why independent learning is important. This is true for, it does any topic, health. How do you cooking? A lot of, uh, a lot of us, men and women, we didn't learn to cook. 
I didn't learn to cook. My mom didn't teach me. My dad didn't teach me. So I've got to learn it myself. It's, it's actually not that difficult. You know, get some cookbooks, watch some videos. You can learn how to do it pretty easily. It's, it can be fun. So just teach yourself. That's how you do it. Teach yourself, then teach your children. And what this is, what's cool is if your children are older, if you maybe you have children a little bit older, you can learn together. It's kind of something you do together. This can actually help you become closer. Right? You can say, let's learn to cook. You can help me. Let's both learn to cook at the same time. You know, dad needs to learn how to cook. I, did, I don't know how. I'm going to try to start learning. Let's, let's learn how to make some stuff. And you can help me. You know, your children, you can say to your children, your children can help you. They're learning as you learn. That's gr what a great experience. As a family, you learn together. Okay, Saeed says, um, right now I'm living simply my life, but I want to open my own business. Oh, beca because I want to own, open my own business to be financially free. But it's very hard to live simply nowadays. How can I continu continue? Um, well, do what I said. Watch this video again. Because ah, I just spilled coffee. <laughs> Sorry, one second. Yay. Okay. Um, you have to learn. It, it takes time. But you have to learn how to enjoy life without spending money. All these things I talked about today. Then it won't feel hard. It should not feel difficult. I lived in a car. I lived in a car. I lived in a van for one year. So I think I'm pro I probably lived more simply than you. And I loved it. It was enjoyable. It was great. I had a good time. It didn't feel hard at all. It felt fun. It was fun. It was an adventure. But I knew how to enjoy it. Every day I went to, I went, uh, I had my dog. My dog lived with me in, in, the, in the van, in the car. So every day we went out to the forest, this great big area. And I would go, we'd go run, I would run and exercise and sometimes just walk. My dog would run around. I'd play with her for a couple hours. I went to a little local coffee shop. I'd get a coffee and just sit I'd, and read books and write and draw a little bit. I mean, there's so many things you can... You can learn to love it and enjoy it. But you have to learn how, this is the challenge. When you have all that free time, you have to then learn how to enjoy that free time in a different way. We're programmed to spend money. We're programmed to spend money in our free time. We enjoy it. How? Well, how? Go to a movie. Buy a ticket. Spend money. Go to a movie. Go to a restaurant. Spend money. Right? Go shopping. Spend money. This is the programming. What do I do in my free time? Oh, spend money. That's how you enjoy it. It's programming. It takes some time, but you can learn other things that are just as fun, more fun, that are not expensive or that are free. So that's what I would say to you. You've got to learn to enjoy this. Don't think of it. It's not. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be fun. It can be great. Yeah, Alexi says, if you're focused only on money, you're blind. You can't see clearly and make reasonable decisions. That's right. Again, it's, it's not that money's bad. Money has it, has, it's a tool. Someone just mentioned this. It's something you use. You become the master of money. You become the master of work. Not, it's your master. Right? What, the, the, it's the, is it the Bible? It's the love of money is the root of all evil. The love, not money. It doesn't say money is evil. It says the love of money. It's focusing on it too much, making it the focus of your life too much. That's where the evil is. That's where the unhappiness is. And, and Alexi's right. If you focus too much on it, you're blind. You can't see all of these other things that are so wonderful that are so fun, that are so enjoyable in life, but you don't see them. Okay, um, Myun Mai with a question about students. How does this apply to students? I am a student. Great. Our parents and teachers always scare us. Fear. 
They scare us to score good marks. Yeah. We have to study even if we don't want to. Now I love to read books, but these colleges eat up all my time. Is it okay to score less and enjoy more? Yes, it is. What are your thoughts? I'm in the third year of my bachelor's degree. For most degrees, it's totally fine to get lower grades. Don't, you know, if, if you don't fail, just get your degree. Instead of an A, get a C. C is still passing. So you spend a little less time, you're less stressed, and you enjoy that other that extra time. So yeah, absolutely, 100% it is fine. Now, if you plan to go to grad school, see these grades these grades are only important with inside the school system. I mean, companies don't care. Most companies don't care. But if you plan to go to grad school, well then they'll look at your grades, of course, because it's all part it's all the same system. But if you don't care about that, then it doesn't matter. Just get your degree and get out and get into the real world. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about your grade point average. Certainly not in America. I don't know. Um, you have an, I guess it's an Indian name. You, you have a Ganesh avatar. Um, I don't know about India, but I can say in the United States, I never, no one ever asked me my grade point average. They don't care. They care about your skill, your experiences. I don't know, your first job. Just get experience. Be good at what you do. This, All this school stuff is nonsense. Lieber, uh, Lieber Bomer says, American TV speaks a lot about money in comparison with Ukrainian or Russian media. Poor countries don't want their people to be financially free. It can cause problems to the government. Oh, Lieberman, you, you, uh, Liu Bomer, sorry about the pronunciation. Um, American government also does not want people to be financially free. It's a different kind of slavery. So maybe in poorer countries you're correct, but in uh, America, they all, they talk about money, but they do not teach independence. They do not teach freedom. They teach spending. They want you to work, 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 and then spend, 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 spend. So yes, maybe there's more money in America. They certainly talk about money more, but they will not teach you how to be free. In American media, they don't teach you how to avoid debt. They don't teach you how to avoid loans, not the main media. They don't teach you how to leave your job. They don't teach you how to have more free time. No, 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 no. They want you work, 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 work 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, have two jobs. Mom and dad both work. So they use money to make people into slaves, work slaves. It's just a different approach. It's the same goal. Well, this is an extremely. Um, you got um, possibly going to ban some people here. AJ Hoke says, do you hate India from Bala Saheb? Well, that is actually absolutely crazy. Of course not. And then Cardo, you are going to be banned. Because you're saying, yes, he hates India. I heard lots of times he said that. You are lying and you are a liar. And I have never said that. Cardo, after this, I'm going to go onto Facebook and ban you. Never again can you join. Not only do I not hate India, I absolutely love Vedic knowledge and culture. Uh, the Bhagavad Gita I consider to be um, the greatest book ever. I love and study the Bhagavad Gita um, every week. I have traveled and visited India three different times. 
So you are lying. And I don't like liars, and liars break our code. We do the right thing is number two in the code, and lying about me and saying something absolutely I have never not one time said I hated India, you are a liar. Quite the opposite. I had amazing life experiences in India. Uh, it was my first time to leave the United States. Um, fantastic. And, and I am a follower of Sanatana Dharma. So you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Hasina with a nice comment. You can't learn everything overnight, right? But you can try to learn new things every day, little by little, little by little. Every sunrise is a new chance for you to change yourself and your life. Late is better than never. It is, right? It's better than... That's a good point. I'm glad you said that, Hasina, because... Um, in a, uh, Here's another slang. We say late bloomer. Late bloomer. It comes from a flower. To bloom is when a flower opens. Right? So a late bloomer for a flower is a flower that opens late. Maybe later in the spring. Maybe later in the summer. Now, of course, it's a metaphor. So for people, what is a late bloomer? It's someone who has happiness or success later in life later than normal. I'm a late bloomer. You know, I, I became financially free. I started my business at age 38. 38. In America, that's late. M most entrepreneurs start their business before age 38. Not all, but most. Um, I got married at age 38. It's a little late. I have I have children at age 51, very late. Don't do that. <laughs> do it earlier. <laughs> but I'm happy. Very happy, but it, it was, you know, it was not a good decision. But am, so what's my choice? Should I cry about it? Should I cry that I waited too long? Should I cry that it happened later? No. Asina's right. If It's better than never. It's better than never. Uh, having children younger probably would have been a better decision. It, it is a better, it's a smarter decision. But I didn't. You know, I was programmed. I made mistakes. It, it's done. I can't change it. However, I'm 51 and now I have two children, two new babies, and I'm very, very, very happy. I'm not going to focus on regret. Why? That's crazy. At least it's better than never. I'm very, very happy. And it's the same for you. It doesn't matter your age now. You're learning, you're doing new things. Wonderful. Enjoy it now. It doesn't matter if you're 60. It doesn't matter if you're 80. It doesn't matter if you're 30 or 20. It doesn't matter, right? We have this moment now. So don't worry about the age, the number. Just love life. Enjoy life now. Your past mistakes, it's okay. We all made mistakes. We all were programmed. Just like your parents. Don't blame your parents for these things. Okay, yeah, they also had the programming, right? They didn't know. They didn't know. Don't blame them. Don't be angry at them. Understand. Just understand and learn now. Do your best now. That's the first code we have. Do your best. Do the best we can. We do the best we can. Just now. All right, we're going long. It's a long one today. Why not? Okay, Glauber Cardoso says, Great indication, AJ. I have read the Rational Male's first part. Cooking is a challenge that requires practice. Yeah, and healthy cuisine even more important. Yes, thanks for mentoring us these last years, much more than Language Coach. Your insightful podcast episodes empowered my life perspective and reality perception oh great thank you i hope the basic membership by effortless english comes soon 
even as you can sell again your business career program. Oh, thank, that reminds me. I have to do that. Uh, God bless your family always. Thank you, Glauber. That's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, the Business English course is coming again. You just reminded me. I forgot. I have to send the files to my computer people. We will resell that uh, in the next few months this summer. Now, I am planning to do some kind of um, like a membership for the podcast for this show to just to support the show. It'll, it'll still be free if you want it free, but if you want to help support the show, uh, we'll have some like cheap membership, maybe some small benefits like uh, transcripts or something like that. Maybe some extra shows that are only for members. Uh, that's the next project. So first I want to do the business course again coming. And then after that, we'll look at a uh, membership for supporters for this show. And again, like you can give me suggestions. What benefits should the members get? Oh, Cardo says I was kidding with her. Okay, Cardo. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, Sometimes uh, in uh, text, it's hard to know joking or sarcasm. So my apologies, Cardo. I didn't realize you were joking. Uh, here's a here's a one way you can do it. This is something I see online a lot. If you're being sarcastic, so the, the, so being sarcastic in uh, what is that? It's a kind of humor, right? Joking, where you say the opposite of what you mean right you say the opposite and it's meant to be you're joking or you're uh make you're laughing at what you're saying so in when you when we do it speaking it's easy to understand because we change our tone like he says oh yeah aj hates india he really hates it can you hear my tone changed so then it's obvious. It's sarcasm. It's a joke. The problem is, in writing, in text, it's dangerous to do sarcasm. Okay? It's dangerous to do it on chat for this reason, right? I just got angry at Cardo. I thought he was serious. Because in, in writing, there's no change in the tone. There's no tone. So I only just see the sentence, AJ hates India. You see this? Do you see the point? So um, then it's like, you know, if I know Cardo, if I know him personally, uh, then maybe I, okay, I know, I know he's joking. That's fine. But since I don't know him personally, then I just see it and I say, oh, well, he's, he's lying. Right? I don't understand that it's a joke. So sarcasm, be careful with sarcasm in chats, with text, because it's very difficult to do it. It's very easy for someone to think you're serious and to get it angry as we just saw. <laughs> now, one way you can do it, after you write something that's sarcastic, you can put a, a line, a slash, right? We call slash, a, a, a vertical line, and then the, the small letter S. This is kind of a internet slang. I'm gonna type it in the comments. Sl small s equals sarcasm. And what it does is, so you can say, you could type, for example, or type it right now. AJ, oh, I don't know what to, forget it. I'll just say, you could say AJ hates India. And then at the end of the sentence, you put the line and the little s. Why? Well, it's, it's like changing your tone when you speak. It, ju it, it means sarcasm. The small s means sarcasm. So it's telling everybody, this is a joke. Actually, it's the opposite. AJ loves India, right? So anyway, Cardo, sorry to get upset. It's just uh, I really like India. As you know, I really love the Gita. Um, so my apologies for getting angry. But this is it's a good example to show the danger of sarcasm online. Just put that little slash, the line, and the little s, and then we all know you're joking. Or, or Dara here. Dara says you have to say lol. LOL is also one. Um, although that one is less obvious for sarcasm. Um, 
but although it does work sometimes, I think the little S is better because it really is saying, I'm telling, using it for sarcasm. If you're joking, put LOL, put the, the little laugh emoji. Um, for sarcasm, again, sarcasm, you say the opposite of what you mean. Put the little S, slash S. Well, so anyway, Cardo, you gave us a, a chance to learn something new. <laughs> Passionate about that topic, too. I love India. Love it. I know, I know, I realize. And I remember you're a top fan. You've actually, Cardo, you've said some good stuff. So anyway, no worries. We're fine. We're fine. I accept your apology. Please accept my apology, and we're good. You're not banned. <laughs> All right. So everyone's just giving advice about... Okay. Um, Eileen, hello to you. Please say hi to me. Hi, Eileen. All right. I think I'll give him one. You visit Algeria. Sarcasm. I have not been to our Algeria. So you're getting the idea. That's right. The little slash S. <laughs> All right. A uh, couple more and then I got to go. Let's see. My baby's still sleeping. Wonderful. You're being so good. Yes. See? Can, Dad can do a show and you. Okay, I'm going to go back in the comments a little bit. See if there's any ones I missed. Okay, Zeno Hama with a good, a nice comment. I believe you can get happiness by money, but how? You can help people with your money. Yeah, this is a good point. But it's not the money making you happy. It's the generosity. It's the kindness, right? Because you can help people without money too. So money, again, is a tool. It's a tool. It's something we use, right? Don't worship a tool. Just like a cell phone is a tool. It's something we can use. Can you use it in a bad way? Of course you can. You can watch pornography. You can do all kinds of stupid stuff on your phone. Or you can use it for good to talk to your, someone you love, talk to your mom on the phone right? It's a tool. It's, so it's, it's what's inside of us and how we use it that makes it happy or sad or bad or good or evil, right? And this, you're exactly right with money. So that's why we don't, it's not the money that creates the happiness. It's, it's not the money that creates the sadness or evil. It's how we use it, how we see it, our ideas about it. So you're exactly right about that. I'm not saying... I'm, I'm not a monk, okay? I, I understand money's useful uh, in life, and we need some, of course. Abra, if I bought a ticket to Okinawa, would you find a moment to meet me? Abra, probably not Okinawa. Uh, right now, I am so busy with the babies because, you know, I have a baby in the hospital. I have a baby still in the hospital. I can't leave uh, Osaka. So I... I, I if you came to Osaka, I would uh, find a way to have coffee or lunch with you. But uh, I can't. Okinawa's too far. I have to fly there. I can't leave my baby in the hospital. Sundor says... How to buy friendship, love, caring, health. It isn't possible, right? Somebody who's the richest in the world, also not possible for him to get these things. They're just buying for appetite. Well said. Very well said. That's, and we know this by looking at rich people. I, don't, I mean, there are happy rich people. Of course, some rich people are happy. But um, we also know there are very unhappy rich people. And why? Because they don't have these things that Sandor said. They don't have real friends. A lot of rich people, they have fake friends. The friends just want their money. Um, real love, caring, health, all of these things. Um, they can't, they, you, you don't have to, you can't buy them, right? Now you can be rich. Of course you can be rich and you can have good friends and real love and care and health. And you can also be poor and have those things. 
So again, money is a tool. It, ha it's, it can be used in a good way. Just like a hammer. If you have a hammer, you know hammer? You can use a hammer to build a house. You can use a hammer to kill somebody. Is the hammer evil or is it good? It's just a tool. Uh, Cardo is asking, what's the popular pronunciation for uh, the uh, for usury? So American pronunciation is usury. So it's got that z. It actually is a, like a z sound, z, that buzzing z, right? Not use, usury with an s, soft s, is not American. It's usury. We have that. We get that little z, z for the pr proper pronunciation. Usury. Congratulations, Russians on Victory Day, says Tata. Excellent. Is that World War II Victory Day? That's an interesting area of history. I'm fascinated by that uh, military history of uh, actually both Russian, the, the, I would say probably the mo two most famous Russian campaigns, Russian military history, Napoleon and uh, the German invasions. Uh, it's quite a fascinating f to me just for military history. Don't invade Russia. <laughs> it's a bad idea to invade Russia. Okay, let's see. I'm just reading through some of the past comments. Okay, let me just jump down to the bottom. I think we're almost done. Uh, let's see. Family requires a lot of sacrifice indeed. Uh, here's a good comment, and I'm sorry again, uh, long time listener, but uh, it's in the, I think, I think it's the Dravidian script, I'm not sure, but it says, my interest lies in doing well for people. That makes me happier in a true sense. There's a, there's a lot of wisdom in that. There's a lot of reason that, you know, religions talk about helping people. Um, of course, there's, you know, kind of a spiritual benefit to that. There's also, though, just a psychological benefit, a selfish benefit, which is strange. If you think about it, it's it's uh, it's it's it seems like it's not logical, but but it's true that when you focus too much on only yourself. Uh oh, this is my last one. Baby's getting hungry. When you focus too much on just yourself only. Right. Just me, 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 me thinking of yourself all the time. How can I be happy? How can I be happy? Me, me, me. Ha, ha. What's the best life for me? You need some of this. Of course you do need to do this some. But if you do it too much, if you only do this, it's only me, 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 me. I, 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 I. Always. You become less happy. You will be less happy. You'll never find the answer. Because the answer is outside of you. I mean, the answer is in inside of you for meaning your your mindset, your mind, your virtue. But the answer is also outside of you, meaning you have to do good things in the outside world. You have to contribute to other people. You have to connect with other people. Love, gratitude, appreciation, generosity. That all involves others not only you so it's it's you know, it's both right it's like we learned in uh, the seven habits book yes first you need that independence you've got to take care of yourself uh, learn your skills learn self-discipline be proactive but then what happens next is you then have to Take that, all these good things about yourself, and connect them with others socially, you know, family, friends, 
the world. And that's where then the greater happiness comes. Right? I mean, for example, this baby. Who's about to cry? Mm, okay, baby John. Uh, you know, if I if I was only selfish, just me, 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 well, this baby, uh, you know, is is causing me lots of effort and difficulty, right? I'm not getting as much sleep. I'm getting less sleep. I have less free time. Right? I've got to take care of her all the time. Right? I've got to change her dirty, stinky diapers. <laughs> um, all of this stuff, right? It's not selfishly me, but I'm happier. I'm happier now with her, helping her, taking care of her, and of course our other baby in the hospital, um, than I was only just me like before I was married just single only me only thinking about myself all the time I was less happy I was more focused on myself but less happy and now I have my wife I have two babies I'm a lot of my time and a lot of my energy and a lot of my effort is for them and I'm happier because we all need something bigger we're part of something bigger I think eventually it goes to, you know, the idea that we're all, you know, uh, created by God and part of something much, much bigger. And we only focus on just me, 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 I, 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 we're forgetting all of that. And so we do find happiness connecting to and helping, caring for others beyond just ourselves. We, we eventually have to go beyond ourselves. Yes, take care of yourself, of course. Just learn self-discipline, learn your skills, all these things, of course, of course, of course, yes, but not only, not only. Then you must go beyond yourself, and that's where you really find. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you from life experience, I'm telling you from the wisdom of thousands of years of people much more uh, wise than than I that this is important you must go beyond yourself okay guys I baby's quiet but she's going to get hungry soon it's time for her to eat so I'm gonna go now as I said we will eventually have a kind of like a supporter membership for the show where you could this will be kind of a cheaper membership um, just to help you support the show, you know, just so I can continue to do this. Especially because I think eventually YouTube will ban me. Facebook, I'm sure, will ban me someday. So I want to create a new website, a new system. We can host, I can host my own videos, not on YouTube, not on Facebook. And uh, that, you know, so your support would help that. So we'll think of something. It won't be expensive. And tell me your ideas. Get on Gab, G-A-B dot com. Gab dot com. Follow me, A-J Hoge, A-J-H-O-G-E. Follow me and tell me your suggestions, like what benefits could the uh, show supporters get. I know transcripts is, people suggest transcripts a lot. That might be one. Maybe extra premium shows sometimes. Uh, I don't know. Give me your ideas. But another way to support Effortless English, support the show, and more importantly, improve your English, speak English powerfully, speak confidently, speak effortlessly, think in English, is when you become a VIP member, but not, not just become a VIP member, you've got to commit. Commit and don't quit. You do that at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there, join, commit, don't quit. Today at Effortless English Club dot com. Lots of love to you. See you next time.